Yeah, okay, it's T with Gary V. Sipping in for three. I know patience is the key. Putting out all of my shit for free. This is T with Gary V. Might go make a flip. Take a risk. Good morning. Uh, I am uh, ready to rock and roll. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Dustin. Good morning, all the people in the chat. Joel with Growing Design. Thank you for joining us. Jokes on the world. Thank you for being here. Uh, thanks for everybody on uh, on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. I see all of you guys in here. And gals, Virginia Fernando, good morning. Let's get into the show. Actually, it was a big one. Let's get right into it. Good morning. Good morning. What's up? Good morning. Hey. Good morning. What's up, Mike? How are you? Good. Um, I'm Sebastian. This is Oliver. Nice to meet you. Guys. And uh, basically, nice I just wanted to asking you because I know that you used to work with your dad, and uh, we're brothers and we work together. So I wanted to know um if you had any like tips for working with um family. Yeah, and I worked with my brother when we started Vayner Media, and my brother and I worked together on Vayner Sports. So, look, Oliver, Sebastian, I think the biggest thing that people make the mistake with family businesses is a lot of things actually first of all if if you're capable of loving each other more than the money and the fame and the respect that will always play out i genuinely believe that this that above everything else like just truly valuing the relationships with my brother and dad like more than the money and the and the accolades really really matter then the other thing is over communicating to each other about dollars and the like kind of respect. I think one of the reasons that um, one of the reasons that uh, my brother and I worked so well together was my brother was more confident and more comfortable with me being the front man and getting the credit, and he and and he valued the dollars, you know, m- not more, but like he was fine with that. And for me. I value the dollars less than being the guy, right? I want to be the guy. With my dad, we we had more of that friction point of like who's the guy, and that made it more difficult. Um, but but still, we were kind of able to overcome, you know, the friction. This is just ego and respect, and money. Those are the two places, and that's why it's so hard. Most people actually care about money and get into fights over it or they actually care about like who like who actually why did you sell all that merchandise was it sebastian was it oliver and there's that ego and that and that and then there's the legacy of it and then you know just it's it's balancing humility and wanting credit you know there's just a lot of like real raw emotions you know what i mean yeah decision making is really tough because we both have valid points and i never would say that sebastian's wrong at anything but I would say that when I come up with like my point or my perspective and he comes up with his perspective, um, it's really tough to balance out each other and, uh, you know, Have go you, got, you, you know, what's really worked for both of my family businesses, dividing and conquering. Cause you can't have two cooks in the kitchen. Cause to your point, Oliver, like, it's not that you think Sebastian's wrong. It's that by you saying it should be red and him saying it should be blue, just in that small thing, you know, when you're, when you're passionate about your thing, you, you want to see your thing come to life. It's not even about being right or wrong. It's not seeing it come to life the way you envisioned it in your brain. That's true. I, re- like, I really mean this. Like I think where people get caught is they try to both do the same thing. And I think dividing and conquering matters. Like, like when you have two cooks in the kitchen, you have no cooks in the kitchen, just friction. So, so for example, just because you guys are wearing it, if you're doing merch, I would just look, if I was like the third brother, I'd be like, hey, here's the, stra- if I was the third older brother, but here's the strategy. We're going to make nine pieces of merch and everybody make their own three pieces. And who gives a fuck if the fonts are different and who gives a fuck if like, yeah. you know, you know what I mean? You, you know, sometimes, because that will work better, you know, because then merit can breathe versus it being convoluted and what ends up happening when it doesn't work or when it does work, you know, when it doesn't work, you're doing this. You're like, see, it was your fucking, li-, you know, even though both of your DNA is in it. And yeah. when, when it does work, even though it's blended, then both are saying this and you get into that friction point. And that's why I think dividing and conquering might really matter as well. Joint decisions are impossible for a business. Okay. That, you know, like back to like sports, there's you don't have two quarterbacks. Yeah. You have, you have two quarterbacks, but one's on the bench. They're not both <laughs> out there grabbing the ball. Same with business. Like there is no co-CEO. It doesn't work. True. 
But what you could do is if your partners is divide and conquer and literally, you know, with one thing, you know, in every, you almost want to write down every task and then pick one person to be one A and one person to be one B. Okay. And what mm-hmm. that means, you know, AJ and I had a really good rule, which was if, if we actually, actually couldn't get to a joint decision through a conversation, I would make the final call because I was a CEO. You know, like that was, that was basically the punchline. And, and that really worked. And, you know, and, and he was great at like kind of, you know, sticking to that. And so, you know, I think that, um, you know, with my dad, I really let him work on the finances and I kind of operated, but he, he, it was his business and he was used to operating. And so when he would kind of try to make a joint decision or, or a post decision or just my decision, that's when a lot of friction happened, especially with when you've got employees underneath you, you know? Bro, uh, how long have you been, have you been working with your brother and dad? My whole life, you know, in essence, I mean, still to this day, basically every professional day of my life, I've been in that place. And, and I'll be honest with you, like when I'm most by myself is when it's most enjoyable. You right. know, I mean, what I mean by that is, you know, in the years where my dad was really letting me run the business, it was like, great. You know, Vayner was really easy. AJ really gave me that spot. But even after he left and went to run Vayner Sports, it was even better. You know, it just, it's, it's hard when you're, when you're a one to share the ball. And it's not because you're greedy or you're mean or you want, you're, you're selfish. It's that, you know, decisions drive a business. And, and I have enormous conviction and can make my decisions very quickly. And I struggle with people that don't, don't have that clarity or like, or, you know, like, or whether, you know, and anybody who doesn't agree, you know, I don't have clarity on other people's decisions either. Right, right. I, I think it's divide and conquer. conquer. Like what, what's been the biggest friction point for you two? Like what's been the biggest oh. fight that you've had or about what? It's mainly when we just have two different opinions on something. But um, we've definitely learned from before a lot of different ways to um work together to work together and stuff. I mean, obviously, we still go through our own struggles and and whatever. Of course, For the most part, everything's been uh, way better than before. And do all do, of- do do you guys have a good sense of where you are? If I said to both of you, between money and like the credit, where do you guys sit? Like if Oliver, especially if I ask you, there's a hundred percent for you for you money. Yeah. Credit, where are you percentage wise? Credit, money. <laughs> no, I, I, would say, <laughs> yeah. I would say I was more credit, but, um, but but real quick, real quick on that. It's not as simple as that. So, for example, when you say credit money, you might be 70 30 and he might be 30 70. And in that is the actual unlock to your happiness because you're not 100 zero and he's not a zero 100. Yeah. But right. once you understand that, it really helps. And, but I'm telling you, by a country mile, the number one piece of advice I have is don't be in a position where you have to make joint decisions, divide and conquer as much as you can, and where you have to make joint decisions, see if you can do both. Mm-hmm. Okay, that sounds, like, that sounds cool, I like that. You see what I mean? Because you, yeah. it's, it's the more separated you are, the more together you'll be. Right. Like if you're like, hey, we wanna make this piece of content, just make both of your fucking pieces of content. Like yeah. literally, even if they're similar. I got you. I got you. Good. Good luck, guys. Thank you so Thank much. You. See You're you welcome. later. That's a good one. Hey, what's up? What's up? What's good, Richard? Good to see you. <laughs> yeah, I'm back again. Thank you for doing this. Super happy to be here. So I'm gonna go straight to the point. Uh, I wanted to hear your take on uh, quantity versus quality uh, of content for consistency purposes. So my question is, um, is a lot of average content better than um, great content? Yes. yes. With a lower consistency? Yes. Okay. Yes. okay. Here's why. Who gets to decide that it's average, Richard? Right. True. True. Answer the question. Um. I mean, it's just me. It's only me who controls like the, the content. That's no? it. That's it. That's where you have it mixed up. That's why I'm so excited. That's why I wanted okay. to answer it. Okay. You don't, you don't get to decide. The audience gets to decide. Okay. And you're going to say no for the audience too often. Okay. 
creators, artists say no for the audience without the audience having a look. That's true. The end. That's true. true. That's why this is such an easy question for me. <laughs> cool. It's an easy question. It's just insecurity about the content. It, yeah. You know, people use perfection as a disguise to not put out. It's actually being a cliche artist and worrying about what people think and having some sort of ideology in your own head or just judging your own self. That's why I wanna push everybody to put things out because they will learn from what the audience likes instead of playing the game of life in their own head. Okay, true. Yeah, because I, I always try to do the, you know, as you uh, advocate us to do two, three pulses daily. So I try to own to that flow, but I find it difficult sometimes because I, I want to do above average packaging. But you are making that up in your own mind. Okay. Like okay. that's my concern. My concern is that you've got, I don't know if you even know yet. If you haven't put out a hundred things, you don't even really know. You know, your below average might be above average. Mm -hmm. You just okay. might be that talented. Or you may put out something that's below average, but you read the comments and you get an insight which makes your next piece of content way better. Yeah, yeah. Your okay. people do not, most people do not respect the audience. Okay. It's a very interesting insight. Like I would argue that what really works for me is I overly respect the audience. All I'm doing is like looking at the comments right now while I'm on with you from Antar Goodwin and Kareem El Rashidi and Sam Reed and Mark Martinez. I'm watching, mm -hmm. even when I'm creating. Okay. They're oh, always cool. right. We're never right. Okay. And um, we, one... might, we might have been right and then it plays out, but we don't know if we're right or wrong until it goes out. True. And no content ruins you. People are like, oh, if I put this out, people are gonna think I'm whack. And then I have no shot. It just doesn't work that way. You know which whack fucking songs the Beatles put out more than people realize. True. <laughs> and uh, right? well, you like that, right? Yeah, it's you true, like it's that. True. It's, it's true. a, it's a, it's a liberator. Yeah. You yeah. Know? It makes it's me realize uh, that I can do. Yeah. So I don't have to like dwell on little things and just go ahead and and post it. You, you also don't know. You need True. to post it to see if you're right. Like I put yeah. out shit sometimes. I'm like, this is gonna suck, and it sucks. I'm like, yeah, I know my mm. shit. Like when I write up wine text, you know, and I write it. Sometimes I'm like, ooh, this is fire. It's gonna sell out in a minute. And sometimes I'm like, eh. And then you know, and and then when it doesn't do well, I'm like, ooh, I'm on my shit. I was right. It was eh. Sometimes I'm like, eh, shit flies out in this, in an hour. All sold out. And I'm like, hmm, okay, that taught me that. You know, you gotta learn. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. I have a one quick question. Go. Um, you always say uh, also to be giving, to do jobs, jobs, jobs. And I wanted to see um, with you, does it make sense to like provide, like I'm a producer, DJ, sound engineer. Does it make sense to provide uh, my, my creations to people who I still got emails maybe, even if we don't necessarily still talk, it could be people who worked with like maybe the Rihannas or other street dancers and stuff like that, but just to reach them and be like, hey, I got this, I was thinking about you, I think this makes sense, or? Yes, yes, but you know that they're doing more for you than you're doing for them. Okay, okay. When you're Rihanna, if they're putting in your fucking, you know, if they're taking your productions, that's huge for you. What would be better, in my opinion, is to go to SoundCloud or Instagram or TikTok and find people that are merging that really need it, then you're really giving. Because okay. when you're giving to Rihanna or Beyonce, they're you're not giving; they're putting you on. Okay, okay, okay. I get that. You got yeah. it. Yeah. All right, bro. Thank Take you. Care. Peace. You got it. Peace. People often want to give to people that, when they receive it, it actually is more valuable to you. And people want to give me things all the time, you know. But the reality, Gary B, I made this song for you for your tea with Gary B. But like. You know, the reality is we've had two theme songs on Tea with Gary Vee. The second one, that's been good, but a lot of people made those things and a lot of times they're making it for their benefit. So, you know, and that's great. And sometimes the person will say yes, but please recognize you're not giving, you're asking in that scenario. Exposure at that level is worth way more than the production value of that thing. Just always, especially in a world where there's unlimited people offering that production. So, let's keep it going. 
Hey, Gary. Hey, Gary. How you doing? Hey, guys. I'm doing well. How are you? So good. Super grateful to be here. Thank you so much for having us. Thanks, Billy. What's cooking? So we're here in West Philip. We're not too far from you. Mm. Super close. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. I love that. Super grateful. And uh, so peely has been listening to you for a while. I jumped on, started listening to you back in December, and uh, got to say you. that you know what you guys, what you say works. So I started yeah, um, everything. We have our podcast, the Jason and Peely Project. We've had some great guests come on by just DMing them through Instagram, and all of a sudden they're replying. Just shocking. People are like, "How'd you get them on?" I was like, "Oh, Gary, you said DM them." And so like, "I'll try that." <laughs> like, "Oh yeah, people come on." So our goal this year was we were working to get really more live speaking going. That's going to now get sidelined yeah. for a long time. Yeah, we yes, did hear you say, well, start a live show to somebody about a week ago. So we started a live show every day at noon. And so second cup of coffee with Jason and Peely live. And uh, that's been going well. Um, across our platforms, we're getting good like private feedback from people like people like reach out on the sideline but we're 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 not finding a way to get like active engagement on the platforms and i, I our strategy so you're getting is, you're getting private messages at a high level but you're not getting as many comments and likes and shares on the actual content correct yes which which what do you want the most of let's go very technical here to bring people value when so, you say engagement in order on which platform and then before we go into that what's the content that you're talking about so our podcast is about providing fulfillment, really just pushing to prove that we can improve mental fortitude, grow wealth, and improve health. And, and it, has a, it, ha go ahead. it has a foundation in uh, real estate. We are, we are uh, large multifamily providers. Understood. So are you getting a lot of private things that are, that are just because people are getting into a, a mindset thing and they're being honest with you on DM that they may feel uncomfortable in the comment section or are asking you more direct questions financially of how to become a multi-family kind of executor. Like you're just finding more in that realm. I get a lot in the fitness side. Um, I do a lot of crazy challenges on the fitness side. So I'm running like 465 miles this month. And uh, yeah, so we get a lot of people reach out from that. And like they're, uh, they're really engaged in that. So, I'm sorry? Privately or publicly? Privately, yeah. Um, you know, it's funny. I get way more private messages than I get in with my engagement. And I get a shitload of engagement. It just means I get a fuckload of, you know, <laughs> private messages. But, you know, let's break this down. If I went very literal, because I, I don't do this often, so I think this will help a lot of people. Um, and you guys have clearly shown to me that you've listened to tactics, which have brought you benefits. So I really want to go tactical. What, when you say engagement, which platform and what action? Sure. So Facebook and YouTube would be the prime two that we, we try and build out further. Now, Okay, and what and are you looking for? Are you saying, when you say engagement, are you looking for comments and likes? Or if you're talking about these two platforms, are you talking about more subscribers? So YouTube would be subscribers. Facebook would be engagement to make sure that we're providing content that's bit of, bit of fitting the listeners. Because right now we're getting the private feedback we are, but we're not getting on the platform. So we're not sure if our content is giving the sure value you give. Sure, you, you're getting the feedback. Yeah, just not. you. Yeah. Jason, yeah. you said to me, you're looking for the feedback to make sure that you're providing the right value, but you are getting the feedback. Hmm. What you're actually saying, which is very fine, no problem at all. Hey, we'd like to get more of it publicly because that in itself helps us more. More people see it. It builds yeah, more point. momentum. So yeah. you're not looking to help them. You're looking to help yourself. And there's nothing wrong with that. But but I, this is why I want, I want to break it down, right? Yeah. You're getting, I mean, Maybe. I... No worries. Pilly, for me, for me, I'm able to really create more content seven out of ten times because of the private messages more than the comments. Because people will go a level deeper private. And I'm like, ooh, there's something there. Ooh mm -hmm. shit. Rich kids are sad. I need to talk about entitlement. You know, like that that's me. Nobody's leaving a comment like, Gary, that's me. I'm a rich kid. I'm a piece of shit. I take all my money from my parents, but I make pretend I earn it. I suck. Like the, people don't do that there. They do it in DM, right? And so I think that what you're talking about a little bit more is things that benefit you, which is fine. More comments, more shares, more likes. You should. I, I genuinely believe it's very hard to be selfless unless you have a level of selfishness, you should have your own ambitious wants and needs. So it's not that you want more feedback to make sure you're doing the right thing because you're getting that. It's that you're trying to grow, which is super fine. Believe it or not, the answer is really wild. It's called asking. Hmm. So one of the things that really works is literally asking. Like for example, even though I can bring it up a hundred times, none of these fuckers are signing up for wine text. 
But when I, thank you. But, <laughs> by the way, today, but I don't know if you drink Pinot Noir, but today is a crazy one. So get ready. It's going to go, it's gonna go fast. 30 days, no drink. And we got three little got back where I'm being quiet. I love it. This I love it. Chandelier is one of the two. But I think you need to ask. I think at the, I think you should make a nice little piece of content at the end of all your content. It basically says, hey, it would mean a lot. Like you should film something and be like, hey, we're really hustling out here. It would mean a lot to us if you left a comment and shared this and liked it and subscribed. Like hmm. the ask, the, the right hook of the job. Like most people are just not asking. Yeah. It's literally just asking both in video, audio, written and visual form. I'm yeah, dead serious. a good amount of content, and so maybe we're missing that. Just really the, the end cap to you know, it. you know, you know what I did with Wine Library TV that completely exploded it back in the day when I wanted that. I created something called the Question of the Day. So like every episode of Wine Library TV, a thousand of them, you know, maybe nine hundred fifty of them after I invented it, was like, all right, time for the Question of the Day. Which Pinot Noir did you drink in your, you know? And then it got people into practice. Yeah. So you know, Question of the Day or. You know, I do it still now. Like, tag one person that you think will get value out of this. Yeah. It's called the ask. Okay. Got it. You know, you're, you're providing value for your audience. You're more than in a position to ask. Not demand. Not say, if you don't leave a comment, you get kicked out. It's a very simple ask. Guess what? Guess what? Hey, so, little one. Guess what? We got we got kiddos running. I love it. I love quiet. it. So, so the world, the world is world right, man. Yeah, so super appreciate you. So I, I don't have any crazy gifts for you. We we appreciate your content, but I do ask uh, 10 minutes on our podcast somewhere in the future. Yes, yeah, somewhere in the future, I'm in for that. Awesome. Only because this little cutie. This All is right, a young one. This yeah. is how Take care. I get people on. Thank you. I, mean, I get it. I'm sure. Thank Sucker you. with babies. I respect it. You're welcome. See you later. <laughs> See you, Gary. Bye, Jason. Big Pinot Noir today on Wine Text. Um, very simply, simple ask based on that. Let's go meta. If you buy wine, if you buy three bottles of wine a month in any shape or form, Publix, Trader Joe's, Costco, uh, wine.com. Like if you buy three bottles of wine a month, please, 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 please stop right now. Go to winetext.com, sign up. It takes two minutes. Take a photo, put it on Twitter. Let me retweet you that you did it, it would mean a lot to me. Let's keep it going. Hey Gary, I've this is exciting. Wow, this is huge. The NCAA board announced it supports a rule change that would allow student athletes Sorry, to receive compensation for third party endorsements, kind of both funny. related and separate from athletics starting in 2020. It also supports compensation for other opportunities in social media. Wow, Vayner Sports. Inner sports just changed. Gary, can you hear us? Yeah. Oh, okay. I just want to. I, I wasn't sure because you were. That was so funny. Oh, I can hear you. No, no. Uh, <laughs> breaking news out of the NCAA. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. About compensating kids that play collegiate sports, which I think will really change Vayner sports. Okay. Let's rock and roll. Hi, Gary. I've, I've always you, Gary? wanted to meet you. I'm probably Thank like. You. Everywhere I'm in my life right now is because of you. Thank so you. Uh, I tried it's, eBay flipping. It's not true. Good news. Oh, it's okay. it's because of you. You took action, but I appreciate. I'll take the assist. I'll John stop. Okay. You okay. Go ahead. So I I tried eBay flipping like three times, failed every time. Um, I tried crypto investing, and uh, Amazon FBA, and now I have a a freelance business, and I just got to quit my job at Walmart three months ago. Good for you. So um, my question is, when should I like hire my first employee? Because I want to grow beyond just a one man Second, band. You can afford it. Okay. Can you afford it now? Okay. Um, I don't know. Let's define affording. Oh, okay. As long as you don't spend money, do you have enough money to get an employee? Not like full time. So but at least a, at least a little bit, yeah. Then you should do it. Okay, okay. The sooner you learn what it feels like to employ someone, the better. So okay. even if you've got somebody for 10 hours a week, that's learnings for you. That's why it's awesome. If you pay the minimum wage or something small, you're like set. Mm -hmm. Pe you know where, you know, Jerry, you know where people get really caught? They don't pay for, they're willing to pay for college mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and to learn. But then in real life, they're not willing to pay to actually learn. You paying somebody mm -hmm. is going to teach you how to be a boss of somebody and it's a much better yeah. deal than a college diploma that talks about being the boss of somebody. Well, that's, that's kind of interesting world. that you say that 
please. Because I, I did martial arts for 12 years. Okay. And I took minimum wage from the guy. And so I was actually ended up like losing money because I did pay for teaching certificates. And I did run like the demo team for a while and teaching and like planning curriculum and running instructors. So I kind of understand like that one thing you said, what was it like three nines is not as good as like 66s or something. Yes. You remember that? I like, yes, I kind of feel smart because I learned that before you put that out. <laughs> Brother, so. you're plenty of smart. Don't worry. I'm not, I don't get to make the rules. Okay. But I get to share my thoughts and things I've learned. Like, you know, don't even, don't put my advice on a pedestal, but mm -hmm. know this, know this. You hiring somebody, even for 10 hours a week, is a monster win. Okay. Be okay. Because if, let's just, I'm just going to use 10 bucks an hour. That 100 bucks a week is teaching, you're getting paid to learn. To learn. And, and okay. then if she or he is bringing you value, I mean, this is a fucking huge win. Yeah. People are very confused out here, brother. People are willing to pay to learn through to courses. Learn and degrees in schools, mm -hmm. and then they don't learn by paying to do things in their actual business. I basically think everything I'm doing is learning, and if I get the output that I paid for, then that's like the bonus. Okay. I want the context. You want, okay. I want the reps. Oh, okay, that makes sense to me. Now all of a sudden, you can see why you would hire somebody earlier, because now it's a different value proposition than am I gonna get my return on my money it doesn't even yeah. matter if you do. Now you're learning something which is going to help you long term because you're so young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm only 21. I'm like I love a baby. It, <laughs> you are a super baby. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Keep, keep thinking that way. Keep thinking like your martial arts thing. Keep remembering this moment when we talked. Investing in something that brings you learnings is always a good always idea. Better. Always okay. better. Especially better than learning it on paper or from somebody else. You learning it, you know. Hearing about it 10 times is way less valuable than doing it once. Okay. Yeah, because I've kind of been frustrated lately because I took on, like, way too much work. Yeah, man, it's time and to fucking delegate. It's, you know, like, the 12 hours a day is just too much for me, right? I respect By the way, I love you for saying that. For okay, me, it's not you. because I got some, I got adrenaline in a different way. And for mm -hmm. you, if it's seven hours is too much, bro, there's no level of money. There's no level of success that is more yeah. important than happiness and balance. Okay. I love you for that. Don't, Thank you. this is why, notice how I said, hey, when I was listening to you, I was like, don't take all my stuff literal. Take my macro literal. You need to be happy. So if six hours is good for you, well, great. Mm. Then that's what it's going to be. But yeah, yeah. Because then- I did see that because I, I saw like my work when I was doing, you're right about six, by the way, like lucky guess. Um, Cause my work, I was, when I was working only six a day, it was getting done faster. And so when I was working 12, you're I got the same output as six. Yeah, you're tired. You're tired. You're I'm not tired, in your yeah. back. I want to make sure you also, one thing to look into is how much do you love what you're doing versus you think it's making you money. Because mm -hmm. one thing I notice is 12 is easier when you fucking are addicted to it. I agree. Yeah. It's definitely not because I video edit. That's my thing, right? Yep. It's not a 12 hour a day thing, but it's not a zero either. I love that. It's Brother, something I love that. Now you got, I love it. You're in such a great spot at 21 mm -hmm. to have that knowledge, to have this framework, keep tasting, do different shit. I like where you're going, bro. Okay. I see some people want to get hired. Yeah, I'm like, sure. Why don't we chat. put up your, what, yeah, why don't um, we put your, why don't we put your social handle up here? People, everyone DM Jared if you want to get hired. What are you hiring okay. for? Um, I need a video editor for, um, right now it's just Instagram captions helping me spell check because I suck at writing. <laughs> so I, There's some um, good software too. L let Dustin put you in touch with some of our team. We're using some software too and then you can have somebody is it Rev? post at it. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah, it okay. is. Yeah, yeah, that's so what I use. And good, awesome. And, I, and you need somebody on the post. It. Yep, yep, yep. And then it's... So, uh, I use Adobe. Dustin, put up his actual uh, actual handle. Wow, thank What's you. This, this means a lot to me. Uh, do you have an Instagram? Only really so people, do you have an Instagram so people can DM you? I do, but I don't use it because so I don't. Can, what about an email? Can, yeah, otherwise... an email. Okay, what's your email? It's a uh, PacificBusinessYT at gmail dot com. Do you want me to Pacific... write it in the chat for Dustin? No, I think Dennis is pretty smart. Okay. Pacific Pacific Business, Business YT. YT for YouTube at gmail dot com. Mm -hmm. Pacific business yt at gmail.com. Wow, thank you.
You're welcome. I'm going to be busy reading emails today. That's okay, though. I think you are. I think you are. So what do you what are you looking to hire real quick? Um, Let's back it out and I got to move on. It's either, either someone to help with captions or yep. someone to help cut down um, gameplay live streams. One of those got two. It. Awesome. I'm sure you're gonna find Thanks, speeds. Gary. Take care, it brother. Means a lot. Happy to do it, brother. Keep pushing. Thanks. Nice kid. All right. Let's keep this going. Let's keep this going. Let's keep it going. Hi. Hi, Natasha. Thank you so much for having me. Can you hear me okay? Perfectly. Um, I am the child of an immigrant as well. And so I instantly connected with you and your story and um, the way you deliver messages just is exactly how my dad delivers messages. And so um, your the way you deliver everything is perfect. So I'll get into this. I'll give you some context. Um, I am a creative and I started out just doing craft fairs. And it honestly was supposed to just kind of be like up for fun on the side hobby, extra income type thing. Um, and then I ended up loving it. And I then hopped on Etsy back in December didn't really get any traction off Etsy. Um, then I started a TikTok, thanks to you. I started a TikTok and uh, had a video go viral. I'm from Kansas City, and so I painted a um, custom Chiefs jacket. And that video on TikTok went viral. It had like, I'm viral for me. I, I'm, you know, by not, not a long shot, I'm not, you know, Charlie or whoever, but um, <laughs> I think it got like 40, 50,000 views. And I was like, Insane. whoa. Um, and then Etsy started like, Ching, cha -ching, cha -ching. and I was like holy cow what the heck just happened and um, so what happened is popping... you started executing the things I talk about every day 100% yeah I executed what you said and it, it did really well and I ended up hopping off Etsy because they take obviously a portion of your fees and I felt like if I'm driving my own sales through what you're teaching me to do why should I give them a portion of my money so I ended Smart. up creating my own website um, things were a little slow at first, and then I had another video go viral, a million, uh, I think it's 1.4 million views, um, which was insane. Again, my website, cha-ching, cha-ching, cha-ching. Um, and then the following week, Shonda Rhimes ended up sharing one of my art pieces on her Instagram wow. feed. And so then it was like, again, cha-ching, I'm like, I, I tagged her just like you had instructed people to do. I tagged her. It was a Grey's Anatomy theme post. Tagged her. She reposted it. And it was insane. So off of that, this is obviously very new to me. I have had several like influencers, um, lifestyle bloggers message me wanting to get like some free product, a free jacket, free stickers, free art, all the stuff that I make. Um, is there a secret? Free sauce? stickers. Free stickers yeah. excites me. What was that? Free stickers excites me. That's low cost for you for good Very exposure. Low cost, yeah. Yeah. Free stickers, yes. Free fucking jackets, mm, only if they promise to post it and they're real big. Okay. There's so no there's secret no... math. There's no formula. You have to go on intuition. You should audit them, see how engaged their audience really is. You know, maybe FaceTime them for two minutes. Maybe you can get a real connection. Free stickers all day. Okay. It's just cheap. They put on their laptop or they share it. Like even if they don't share it, it's let let them, let them have it around their life. There there are people that have influence, you know. But but um, it's just it's just value exchange, you know. Yeah. Like if you decide somebody's worth a free jacket and that's right for you, then do that too. Okay. Influencer marketing will work for you. It's not a requirement, but if you have something as low cost as free stickers, I'm really into that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Stickers and then my art prints. Those are, you know, you know what you need to do though, when you send something to somebody and nothing good happens, you can't dwell. You have to look at it at the macro. Okay. It's kind of like the TikTok viral posts. You know, if you gave up after the first nine that only got 12, you know, views and said, Gary's an idiot. You would have never gotten to the time when the video went viral. Same with yeah. influencers. If you give up after like, you're like fucking Sarah, what a, Fuck her. You know, she didn't, you know, like if mm -hmm. you do that, you're finished. You need to be like Sarah sucked, Rick sucked, Johnny sucked, Jenna sucked, Stevie sucked, Ricky sucked. Oh my God, Amanda changed my life. Okay. Got it? Yeah, because I did. I people, have, get like, what Natasha, was that? people get emotional. People get emotional. People get emotional. They're like, oh, fucking Sally ripped me off. All her followers yeah. are fake, I bet. You know, like, mm -hmm. like she, even if they posted and nothing good happened, you're like, fuck. People get emotional. There's no, there's no fucking crying or emotion business. Yeah. 
Yeah. And I did. I had like 12 videos that got literally eight views. <laughs> so if I had stopped, I, I wouldn't have had any success. That's right. Okay, my another quick question. Um, so I had had an idea to do Instagram lives with my followers one on one, basically like this, but teaching them digital art on their iPads. And um, I have a business mentor and um, they kind of kiboshed it. They're like, no, you need to charge. You need to charge for that. Like doing maybe like a 20 to 30 minute session. Your, your business mentor is a salesperson. Okay. I am a marketer and brander. Mm -hmm. I don't agree and I know you know that I don't agree. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I knew instantly. I was like, Gary's not gonna agree. And I don't necessarily agree, but my well, good question, news. I guess, we won. Two to one. Yeah. <laughs> true, 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 true. My other, my, the, the question though, is there a, ever a time or of course. Um, yes. that I can charge for that or yes. something? When you desperately need to. Okay. You know yeah. what the goal is though? What's that? To never desperately need to. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, and I don't do you, desperately do you, need to. I wanted correct. to do it to create Oh, by the community. way, you know what's going to happen? You're going to build a fucking community that's going to buy your other shit. Okay. Your business mentor is transactional. Okay. Your business mentor is 101. Okay. If your business mentor is getting paid, you may want to reconsider it. Okay. All right. Yeah. I, I had a feeling. I mean, I I listen to your podcast 24-7 and I, I implement and I've turned so many other people onto it too. Um, and so you've I'm implemented kind of it and good thing you've implemented my free advice and a lot of good things have happened. Yeah. You're paying for that advice. I'd like to see what the ROI of that is. Yeah. 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 So true. Um, very true. <laughs> I, uh, I, I think you're hundred percent right. <laughs> and I knew instantly. I, I think like, you need to, I think you need to say, I think you need to write a nice email that says we no longer work together. Okay. That's my intuition. I could be wrong. Maybe she or he's mm -hmm. bringing a lot of value. But, yeah. but if 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 I heard everything you just said, which is you're selling things from exposure, I would never charge transactional twenty nine dollars for fuck. Okay. All right. Right on. Right on. Talk to you. Thank you so much, Gary. See ya. Business mentors, my fucking dick. Let's keep it going. Fucking business mentors. Devin, what's good? Hey, Gary. Thanks for having me. How you doing? Gotcha. Really good. Hey, um, so before I get to my question, just want to give you a quick background on where I'm coming Please. from. So about Please. four years ago, I quit my full-time job to start my own business. And I built that business up for the last three and a half years and ended up selling it about six months ago. When I started the business, I was just all about speed. What works, what doesn't. So we did a lot of like A-B testing. We tried direct marketing, direct sales, and I have a sales background. We tried, yeah, a variety of different things. And what one were you of selling? Those was, it was a virtual reality events business. So we okay. did B2B events, like conferences, yep. things of that nature. Um, one of those things that we did like A-B testing for was just generally social media. Hindsight, that's probably something stupid to cut, but basically we saw so much success in other areas that we just decided social media is not for us. We're right, starting because, to get- Because social media by nature is branding and marketing and sales. And most people yeah. are looking for sales at first. It's a complete yeah. ROI math arbitrage. It's, it's a, people build, it's the last call. You know, the right. reason I'm different than most people is I actually know how to build Nike, not how to sell 30,000 pairs of sneakers. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I, I completely agree. Uh, I've been listening to you for three or four years. Honestly, I started listening right when I started that job. Um, and Thank I you. keep listening to you because I, I know social media has got some value, obviously, especially in the long term. But what I really like listening to you about is your passion, your authenticity, everything about like knowing who you are. So that's a lot of what I've been absorbing. So I sold Thank my business did. about six months ago because I had more or less like not a change in passion. I was never passionate about that business, but I just wanted just to time. start doing something. It was just time. Yeah, I just, I wanted to start doing something I was passionate about. Good for you. So I sold that and now I started a new business, which we just launched a few weeks ago. It's Sun Protective Apparel. So I had Ooh, I like a few that. changes in my life last year where I got married. So that was a big life change. 
But then I was also diagnosed with uh, melanoma skin cancer, which fortunately was removed, but I'm athletic. I did college track and field. I still, I'm a CrossFit coach, big into the fitness community. I'm always outdoors working out. And there was no shirts that could actually protect me from UV. So like that was like the market need I found. So I'm launching my own product. Which there's fits no, that need. there's, there's no better business on earth than when someone scratches their own itch. Yeah. So uh, that's my favorite, exactly. literally my favorite, literally my favorite way a business starts. Literally my favorite, number one, number one. Yeah. I mean, that's a big reason I started it because of listening to your content and hearing that over and over and over. It's like, what is my need? What, what exists in the marketplace or what doesn't exist in the marketplace that I can fill that need? So yeah, I jumped in, started it. So I have a fresh slate. Again, didn't do any social media last business. Personally, I do little to no like social media. I don't have like a personal brand. It's really just a way for like, I use social media strategically to reach out to decision makers on Instagram, use that messaging sphere, use Twitter, like, but I don't have any personal preference. Yeah, and what one thing I'm worried about, if you're using that, are you using it from your personal account or your brand's account? So I've in the past, I've used it from my brand's account. You know, one so, of the things that you need to keep in mind is how good that brand or the person shows up is a big factor in the conversion of that outreach. Yeah. You know, like, like, like a highly attractive person, boy or girl, is more likely to get the person they're courting when they're out that they think is cute <laughs> than one that's not. Same yep. with social. If your shit is good on social when you reach out, good things happen at a higher percentage. Yeah. So one thing to think, cause you've got sale, you're a salesman, which I love, I am too, I get it. So you've got that part down. What I, you know, what's super important, what, and you can be very effective with this. Like when you start reaching out to influencers or other people, if your brand's showing up proper, when they look at who DM them, they're more likely to do something with you at a better cost, whether that's free or a discount. If yeah. you look like shit, or if you're not playing the game right, <laughs> They're going to charge you twice. You can see how the economics amortize out very quickly on just, I, 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 sure, because you're a sales brain, you already can see why I just gave you a very good reason that your Instagram right. and Pinterest and TikTok look, need to look proper just on the ARB, on the transactional influencer marketing play. Yeah, so th that's actually ultimately the question I had for you. So basically, I have two blank slates. I have my business, I have my personal. I want to... Oh. Both. I want to deliver all Both. the content. So just Both. start. Both. So is it more effective to do four hours every single day of my business or like two and two? If I only have, let's say I only have four hours. Is it Why more do you effective only have four hours? Die? Help just, me with that part. I mean, we'll get, we'll, we'll I don't, get to the other part. It could change day by day, but yeah, I'm starting a new apparel business. I mean, just the process of getting operations set up sales. I see. Uh, I see. You're talking about four hours of marketing, not four hours yeah, four, a day. Four hours available to dedicate to marketing. And oh, that's amazing. Presence. First of all, that's amazing. That's a, you, 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 you went from putting me in a bad mood to in a great mood. <laughs> uh, you know what I would do? Not overthink it. You know, go with the flow. Being a personal brand is tricky. It might not be in your DNA. You might be self-conscious. You're like, what do I fucking say? You know, please look into the you know, the content pyramid I put out and watch the video of like yep. the document don't create, like get that into your brain. Here's the answer. One day, 30 minutes, personal brand, three and a half hours brand. One day, you know, five days in a row, four hours, personal brand. Then for two and a half, people think there's a blueprint. There isn't. It's a net net yep. game. Um, I'm not, you know, I want you to taste both at enough scale that one or two emerge. But look, a cancer survivor is inspirational, period. That is an emotionally, like, you know, like, fuck, man. You know, and, and you can help a lot of people. Fuck selling shit. Like, you're going to help some kids. Yep. Yeah, you're gonna help a 16, Right? You're going to start, you're going to help a 16-year-old. It's, it's you know, bigger like than that's me. What, it is bigger than you. So, like, you've got to yeah. do the personal brand. But the apparel brand will, will be able to scale you when you hire two people. So the answer is both. Both, 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 both. And don't overjudge yourself on the strategy up front. There is no right answer. It's just going to, just let it flow. Whatever you're fucking feeling, let it yeah. flow. And when you don't feel it, just like you didn't feel the fucking VR business anymore, switch it. So you get a little burnt out of doing personal shit and you go hard, boom, 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 boom. You know, that's why I love having a ton of shit. Sometimes I'm yep. flowing on Empathy Wines. Sometimes I'm flowing on Wine Text. Sometimes I'm flowing Vayner. And then Vayner X has like fucking launched Vayner Commerce this way. Like, you know, I can't, I just can't stop launching businesses because I need flow. <laughs> I need flow.
Yeah, congrats on Vayner Comics, by the way. Thank I was you, reading bro. about that yesterday. It's awesome. Thank you. All right, bro. Wish you well. All right, appreciate Take you. Take care, Dad. Thanks. Flow. Flow, flow, flow. It's really cool. Really cool business. I like where he's going. I'm really rooting for him. And his Saints signed Juwan Johnson, one of our Vayner Sports most exciting rookies this year. So, Dustin UK over there, a little slow on the trigger. Well, I, I always like to wait till you finish your sentence. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'm ready. Hi. Hi, Marianne. I met you in 2009, and I apologize because it took me way too long to listen to you. Well, listen, I'm glad you're here. Thank you. So I've been going through jab, 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 uh, right hook. I'm a southpaw, so I guess for me it's really a left <laughs> hook. And I understand on page 13 you talk about that magic blueprint that everybody wants to know when it's time for the right hook. And I understand that that doesn't exist. Um, so my question is, what are the indicators that you look for of knowing when it's time to throw that hook? It's less about the indicators from the audience. It's more about the indicators in my real life. Like when Empathy Wines was done being made and it was time to sell, <laughs> it was time to throw the right hook and announce it. You know, when Wine Text was invented, then went three months and I felt it was perfected, then it was the time to write hook. So it's less about you feel like your audience is there, it's more about the necessity to throw the right hook. Mm -hmm. There's never a bad time to throw a right hook. There's, I have a preference that the longer you can build trust that your hook will land more likely because most people, and you know this, are throwing right hooks from day one. Yeah. Um, but but I would say that the indicator to when is more predicated on the business, whether it's a financial need. I mean, there's some people that need to throw right hooks right now that didn't want to, yeah. but but their business is struggling in a COVID world. And so I think that, um, I think I think the right hook is predicated more on your business truth, your need for dollars. The longer you don't need dollars, just like that young woman a couple of questions ago, if you don't have to monetize your audience, don't. Mm -hmm. You know, if I lost all my businesses, you know, maybe Tea with Gary B would just be a subscription business because I'd need to feed my family. Mm. Wow. I prefer, but I, I prefer not to throw the right hook. Mm -hmm. And when I throw right hooks, I try to make them not direct to what I do for a living. I like that my right hooks are like sneakers and wine more than, more than paywalls behind content because I've established that as a free part of my life. Mm -hmm. Um, so I have a brick and mortar and I'm working on pivoting to um, your model of um, content, free content to paid access. Yes, I love that. So in Do me a that, favor, Marianne. When you go to that, make sure when you're in your free world that you're, re you know, just flirting just to the last part and then you got to pay. What I what I think it really requires it's kind of how I think about nonprofit. I don't start businesses that have like a if you buy if you buy empathy we donate five dollars to you know I don't like mixing I like doing my thing and then quietly behind the scenes doing the right thing in my give back. That's how, I like that separation it's similar to the young men that started this show, divide and conquer. You know mm -hmm. when people blend stuff they tend to get caught. So you know if you're a strategy goddess, mm -hmm. which I love, you know. Do me a favor, really go, really give everybody your best. Know this, the information's a commodity. There's nothing I don't say publicly that I say to my clients. It's the nuances of the details and the execution. Mm -hmm. Most people that wanna sell content think that they have to hold something back that they don't hear in the free part. It's not true. You're selling the access, the one-on-one, -on -one, where I can ask an extra question, when you can ask mm -hmm. an extra question. That's why this has been so powerful in comparison to my Q&A shows. I've had time to go deeper. I was on mm -hmm. with 31 minutes, with 28 minutes yesterday with that guy. You know, like, mm -hmm. so it's the depth. What That should liberate you to give better information for free because you know you're selling access and nuances, not information. Okay. And it's, Understand? It's the, yeah, the access is where it gets what I would call into a real custom kind Correct. of program. Correct. Yeah. And you could do custom in a lot of ways. You could have a scaled like 50 person group that all pay one thing. You could have, you could have it up tiered even in the paid part. You can have the fifth, you know, the up to a hundred people paying a hundred bucks a month. And then you can have the thousand dollar thing because it's one-on-one -on -one for hours. Hmm. More access, more valuable. Okay. 
Um, right. Any other advice about having like a really big vision? Because I know you have your vision about buying the Jets. Um, mine's pretty big. Go ahead. What is it? Um, I want to end violence against women and children. So I think, you know, I think when you have such an altruistic, you know, it's funny, I have, I have a secret bigger mission than the Jets thing, which is I want to reframe alpha male success to be around kindness and empathy. I think, A, you have to realize you have no shot of accomplishing it before your death when it's that mm -hmm. big. Mm -hmm. So when you're boiling the ocean, you need to enjoy the process mm -hmm. and you need to know that you're just one tiny block in the building towards it and you try to try to be the best possible block you can be. I think when people have big goals, they get crippled by it and then they really just get into this mucky place. So I think you just need to be practical about how big of a goal that is and you need to push hard every day. Every day, every day I push hard through my private and public actions to put kindness and empathy and compassion and sympathy and warmth on a pedestal. And that's all you can do. That was one of my favorite moments. I think it was two weeks ago of you and your dad where he just grabbed your face and planted this kiss on you. And I, I was just in tears. It was so beautiful to see that. Nice is good. Like we need so much more light. Negativity, unfortunately, is much louder than positivity. Mm -hmm. And so, and so that's why people are so stressed and caught up in what social media does. Cause social media is just an exposure, an indicator, a mirror to who we actually are. It doesn't change us. It's exposing us. So, you know, if, if you have good in your soul, it's, I, I feel like it's a huge requirement to share it and talk about it. Mm, thank you. So, and thank you for demonstrating welcome. that kind of emotional range. We need more men like you out there demonstrating that. So thank you for being I'm on it. Me. You're welcome. Take care, Mary. Bye-bye. Bye. All right, let's keep this going. Curtis. Hey, Gary. Can you hear you? me? I can. Good. Really good. Um, this is super exciting. Holy shit. Um, so I'll just give you a little bit of context and then I'll ask, I have like two questions. One's a little bit more heady, one's a little bit more tactical. So sure. just to bring some value and then kind of explain all this, like I moved out. I fucking, I don't rely on my parents as much anymore. I traded my car and I don't drive like a fancy car anymore. I live Why in like a humble happen? apartment. Um, well, my dad bought the car and like, you know, he kind of values that stuff. And like, I understand he comes from but that why, generation. Why did, why did you decide that? I, I was trying to cut costs. I'm trying to like live, you know how you're like live humble. I, uh, I'm I doing do. that. Why was it? Did somebody tell you my content? Something well, out? Why? Like a big, a big insecurity I've always had was relying on my parents, right? And so when he bought the car, it's like fuck, like it's not. I didn't do that, you know what I mean? Like it's not like I didn't, you know. So you so. were always there mentally. You always had a discomfort with that relationship. One hundred percent. One hundred. Keep going. Yeah. Um, and you know, I, I work that like shitty job that like that you talk about, where I get to have all this time to do the stuff that I want to do, but I get the job done. Um, and you know, I live in this humble apartment and I, and the biggest thing is like, I stopped valuing perfection, um, too, when I start putting content out. Right. So if you look at some of the stuff on my Instagram, like I'm literally in my girlfriend, what is your Instagram? To, uh, Kurt underscore DC. Um, and Go so on. like, you know, I do like kickboxing videos and like, I'm literally in my girlfriend's room and there's like stuff on the floor. Like, I don't give a shit. Love like, I understand. Love it. Yeah. Um, bro, and so, so far you're firing me up. Like everything coming out of your mouth. I'm fucking loving. No, man, I, I've been following you for so long. Um, and so, you know, my first question is a little heady and the second question is a little bit That's more okay. tactical. I got it. I um, that part. The first one is, is like, you know, I've been putting content out for, for a while now and I, and I believe that it is in my best vested interest to have everybody know who I am, right? Like you say. Um, and so I'm trying to capitalize on, on that opportunity. And the second reason is like, I just really want people to have that winning mentality because there's so many people around me that have, you know, they're in like shitty situations. And it's like the analogy is like a sports analogy is if you're like down all these points, you know, your, I don't know, your goalie's injured, all these, all these excuses, right? Like I understand it's like, you could fold. I understand it's totally understandable. You could fold, but I just don't want that for them, right? Like I want them to win. I want them to have that, Me neither. you know, that winning mentality that you have. And so, but I'm like, I've lived a pretty pri like privileged life myself and I'm right. only like 27. Right. So I don't feel a hundred percent comfortable, like putting that out. Like when I talk to them, it, uh, it goes well, over well, but, but putting but the I content think, out. But I, but I think you should put out the content because you come from an incredible place. You, you know, you are coming from a privileged place and you're speaking at it. You're gonna be able to hit people that I'm not able to hit because they can't associate. You're gonna have more credibility with somebody who was wildly entitled and privileged. And then mm -hmm. you made the move. I talk about making the move because I've seen it bring so much happiness to people in that situation. You've actually done it. You have more legs to stand on talking about it 
at some level than I do, or at least from a different perspective. Mm -hmm. Cause I feel like, you know, like for example, there's one guy I was talking to, I'm, I'm glad he's like actually pretty responsive to it, but like, you know, he he's like divorced and he's like got all these, all this financial pressure and stuff. And I'm like, dude, why don't you just like sell your house and fucking do that stuff. And he, he responded really well, but I just feel like if I put content out saying that, like who am, I've never bought a house, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know if that's. Don't tell people like, but bro, bro, I never was a spoiled kid. Just because you weren't in, you know, some of the best, some of the best, best Bill Belichick was not a good football player. Mm -hmm. like, I, I don't think that you, I think you can speak to it from your perspective about it. Okay. I speak, I speak on two core things, things I've lived, which is where I really spend my pocket, but then things that have become very obvious to me as a human observer. I'm good at that. You know, I understand that. I feel comfortable with what I'm talking about. I have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of interactions with human beings that make me very confident. I think you're very confident in knowing that that person would be much happier if he minimalized and was able to breathe. And so you think it's okay to like put content out talking about as that? As long as you're not full of shit. Well, like, I don't think, you know, I believe it, right? I like, you know. I don't think you are. I don't think you're gonna make pretend that you, you, mm -hmm. you know, like you're going to talk and you're going to, yeah, I think it's, I think you're trying to help. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I think um, you have a very then, unique perspective. Not only were you privileged, but I assume that also meant that you were around other privileged people and you've seen patterns. And and, and yes, listen, you yes. see it. You saw it. I was on with Jared a little while ago. I'm like, hey, don't put me on a pedestal. All you have that to do is deploy. Like, yeah, he was. All you have to do is just be humble about it. People, you know, I talk with such conviction and so Jersey and so much energy and so much confidence mm -hmm. that people, you know, often don't like me at first or think I'm audacious or think I'm full of shit or think that I'm audacious. And I understand when you, when you come with this kind of heat, it can come off that way. But if you really watch carefully, what makes me palpable is humility. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. just be humble about it. Okay. Um, and then the second question is like, you know, like I'm, I have all your books, right. And crushing it and all that stuff. So I'm trying to think of like brainstorm ways to maybe make like a little bit more money. Like I said, I'm living super humbly. Right. But just to make like maybe 500 to like a grand more just doing this. I, I like, want you, by the way, by the way, I want you to make $38 million a second. If you earned it yourself, like let's not demonize money. Let's just demonize mm -hmm. like being entitled to it or being subsidized by somebody else. Cause it leads to unhappiness not because we're mm -hmm. jealous of those people. So mm -hmm. I think you should make as much money as humanly possible. Like, let's not demonize mm -hmm. it. Like, like if you earn it, that's a great accomplishment. For sure, for sure. Um, but yeah, just just like, so I have all these hobbies, right? Like I build model kits. I like do kickboxing. Like here's, here's the Gundam. I don't know if that's cool or not. But, <laughs> that is um, cool. Yeah, like, I don't know. I'm, I've been going off on like all my hobbies and stuff. And like, uh, I was just thinking like, is there, like if I could should, brainstorm Kurt, things. You like, know what? Listen, you're you're uncomfortably likable. <laughs> Thanks. so i you're welcome so i think you have a real shot mm -hmm. what i would do if i were you based on what i just heard if you're a fucking kickboxer dude and you got this great hair and you fucking make models and nerd it out like i think you need to put your whole fucking world out there see hey i'm person. trying man good so you're putting out all this stuff you're doing are you putting yes. in your content the model stuff too oh uh, yeah 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 good so look i think you keep doing that at volume how hard are you going at TikTok? No, I, yeah, not that much. Like a little bit, a tiny bit. Yeah, dude, I can even tell you got some muscles underneath there. Like, dude, do some kickboxing fucking shit with no shirt on and you'll fucking be I've been growing doing it up. A little bit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bro, you need to post on TikTok three times a day. Okay. Like, if you want a prescription from the doctor, here you go. Three times a day, TikTok. Three. Okay. And then what do you think about like if I would is is a hobby shop still like viable today? Because I don't own the intellectual property, obviously, of the models, but of course not. But you can make models and sell them. You can create your own model. Like uh, do, no, I don't think a hobby shop is where you need to go at this minimal level because retail is not okay. the place to go, especially if you don't that's have what I was a yeah, that's exactly of money to throw at it. No. Mm -hmm. I think you should go on tick. You just watched a girl three fucking videos ago fucking make art on jackets. And then make one TikTok and explode her business. True. I think you should make a Shopify store or or make an Instagram. I mean, there's a retro vintage toy guy who just posts his toys on fucking Instagram and says $13 yeah, first person or plus. Yeah, so, all those guys. so you know what to do.
I think, t- bro, I'm telling you, shirtless kickboxing and fucking, <laughs> and, and fucking like, you know, kit making on TikTok will change your life. Three a day. I'm telling you right now. Okay. I'm telling you right now. I own zero equity I in TikTok. You. I don't give a fuck about TikTok. Oh, I know. If TikTok I disappears know. tomorrow. You know me. You've been around. I don't I give know. a fuck. I, I give a fuck about attention when it's yeah. underpriced that 100%. can lead to something that brings you happiness. You know mm-hmm. me. I can tell you know me. And you aren't making three TikToks a day. Fuck that, bro. I no, love everything right. about you except that part. No, 100%. I agree. I don't like that part. I got to do it. Just Justin, what do you want? I'll just leave. No, no, go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I didn't. Bike videos are sick, by the way. I watched. I looked at his Instagram. Your fucking yeah, bike Dustin, videos are sick, dude. Yeah, Dustin, why don't you put that shit out? Man. That shit's fucking dope, man. Holy Thanks. fuck. No, but I just wanted to say I didn't even know Kurt was going to be on today, and he never asked me, "Can I be on the show?" But I noticed him following me the other day, and I just like something I saw on his page. I just like I just liked his page, and I was like, I'm oh, gonna thanks, follow man. him back. Like, so. Is it because you're both very handsome Asian men? Is like, is are we going kind of like subculture here? Like, what do you guys? Yeah, Dustin, you're no, a I think guy, man. Right. Yeah, Dustin's super sneaky, guys. I think Dustin's got a little handsome thing going on. Like right now, this like kind of you got this little like fucking like b boy b BMX shit going on. Like Dustin, like I've I've definitely gained more attraction towards you during this tea time. Thanks. Right back you're at welcome. you. <laughs> thank you, bro. Is the beard? Anyway, Kurt, yeah. if you don't make thank you, if you don't make three posts a day, I'm done with you. Yeah, I know for sure. I get it. All right. Awesome. And then is Talk there yo, soon. is there oh. any way I could come hang out with you guys for yes. like a date? Yep. Really? Work with work with Dustin. You can have a we can have a triple date. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Gary. <laughs> you Love you, it. man. See you later. Love you, man. Dustin, do not let that dude come to our office unless he's posting three times a day on TikTok. I will be creepy and make sure. Thank you. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Uh please sign up for Wine Text. Please go to All In Challenge. Uh buy your Raffle tickets, my uh, my raffle is expiring soon. I'm really looking forward to spending the entire year with somebody. Let's talk soon. I love you guys. See ya. I am giving away the ultimate Gary Vee experience. How should that go? Okay. Over the last week or so, I've been uh, jamming with my friend Michael Rubin and helping out on this all-in challenge that I am accepting right now. But allinchallenge.com, please go there. We are challenging some of the greatest artists, entertainers, athletes in the world to provide a ridiculous all-time experience or one of their most iconic items in their collection to help raise money to help feed the hungry during this ridiculous time. And so now I have to put up my auction. So my auction, the ultimate Gary Vee experience. Here we go. I'm going to go off the top of the head. And you can go on all, uh, allinchallenge.com to go bid on this. I am giving away... Okay. You get to, in the course of a year, you will go garage sailing with me and film uh, Trash Talk. Also, you can get a workout with me and Mike Vacanti. So I know a lot of you pay attention to that part of my world. Also, we're going to go to Wine Library and do a $25,000 uh, shopping spree. That's right. I'm going to pay my dad. <laughs> well, I'm going to donate. We're going to pay my dad $25,000. So $25,000 shopping spree at Wine Library. I will walk through the whole store with you, tell you the war stories, and you'll buy a bunch of uh, wine, beer, liquor, whatever you want, food. We are going to go to a Jets game together. You're going to tailgate with me. I never do this. When I give away Jets tickets, I never let the person sit with me. So you will sit with me during the Jets game. I won't talk to you during the game. I'm completely focused, but you'll get that. So the ultimate Jets experience, tailgate, full game with me as well. Also, I'm going to give you one week play at Vayner Media. So this is for you and a plus one, by the way. So the two tickets, the for, we'll do some plus ones. We'll do some just me and you, depending on what it is. One full week at VaynerMedia, getting consulting and business advice from Team Gary B and me for the entire week, hanging out in the pit where the show's done. Uh, you're going to be a guest of my podcast. We're going to do a wine dinner for you and seven of your friends uh, at Hunt and Fish Club uh, in New York City. And I'm going to fly you, uh, all paid, plus one, to three of my keynotes and we'll work on those details. The ultimate Gary Vee experience. I hope you bid on it. I hope you get involved. I hope we raise a lot of money to help people that need it. Also, what's so fun about the All In Challenge is you get to challenge people to be in it. I am gonna challenge all the Vayner Sports athletes. I expect you in there, so that is number one. Number two, I'm gonna go with, ooh, you know what? Timbaland, the super producer who's completely lighting up uh, Instagram. Timbaland, the super producer, I'm calling you out. And finally, I got one. The Undertaker, one of the great wrestlers of all time. 
Please join the challenge. Everybody go to allinchallenge.com. Please support this. The experiences are gonna be nuts. We've been working, bleeding out of the eyeballs for the last week, putting this all together. You're gonna be blown away what you're about to see on social media. Hashtag all in challenge. Please check it out and please go to your favorite celebrities, athletes, and entertainers and leave hashtag all in challenge to get them involved. The all in challenge. Please take it.